Hi there, hello there. Welcome back to Redbeard Studios. I'm Red. And this week, we're going to be talking about making a portable bandsaw box stand thingamajig. Yeah, you heard me lament the fact that I didn't, you know, I don't have a, a standing 14-inch a bandsaw uh, anymore. And I've been wanting to get another one. But until that time, uh, I've been having to, to make do. And I got tired of trying to... You know, lock this thing up in a vice and do those other stuff. I've seen metal stands out there before. Uh, there's some great ones. There's this one here from a, a small company that uh, runs a metal shop. They're not a big company or anything. And they charge a fair price, I think, for that. You know, it looks like a pretty, you know, good quality item. But for me, you know, that's 130 bucks. That's honestly more than I paid for the saw. You know, at that point, I'm talking $230. I'm, you know, within spitting distance of, uh, you know, a good used 14-inch uh, saw. So, for me, that was kind of hard to justify, you know, dropping the cash on that. You know, for some people that have got a shop and they do this all the time, sure, I could totally see them doing that. But for me, I wasn't going to make it. So, this week in the studio, we're going to be making a wooden version of something like this that you can build for 20 bucks or less. But before we get to that, let's do a quick update on Maker Faire. They finally got the schedule out, and it looks like the Bears going to be talking May 20th, that's Saturday, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon at the Maker Square Pavilion, or stage, or whatever they call their stuff over there. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, one of my favorite topics, home distilling. So I hope to see you there, hang out, uh... Listen to a little bit and maybe chat up after the show and we could talk about, you know, tools and moonshine and all sorts of other stuff. Hope to see you there. But anyway, let's get back to the good stuff. So we're starting off with one of these, uh, the old uh, Bauer saw. Okay, mine says central machinery on it, but it's the same thing. All they did was change some of the color, slap that Bauer label on it. It's the exact same size, specs, everything else. So the box I've got here was one that I've, made to the size of the saw that I have. If you've got a different saw, a different model than this, the design should work, but you'll have to make some allowances to it. So just be aware, you can't just, you know, cut down the exact same size because these saws aren't all identical. And if you head over to my website at red-beard.com and click on projects, I've got a parts and tool list here. They'll show you everything we used for uh, for building this project, all the tools and the parts that it takes. I'm also going to have available plans that you can download. Uh, the, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not the most sophisticated plans. Basically, what you got here is it's going to be a, uh, an image file that is that is to the actual size. And the idea here is you guys could download this. And if you want, actually print it out on a printer, cut out the, the shapes, tape it to a, a piece of plywood, and then just cut around it, trying to make it as simple as possible. But I got the sizes on there. It's pretty easy to eyeball this and figure out exactly what we're going for. It's not a complicated project, not by a long shot. The idea was to end up with something that you could knock down flat and store away, because this isn't something that's going to be set up and used all the time. You know, the main unit here is a portable bandsaw, so I wanted something that when you weren't using it, you could store on a shelf or between a couple items, something flat, easy to throw out of the way. You also know here the top item isn't an actual piece of plywood. That's just because I happen to have some extra high density laminate around. Uh, got some extra desks from the office that we weren't using anymore and I decided to chop them up and, and do some projects with it. But a piece of plywood would work just fine. Now this transforms into this. And there you have it. As you can see, we got the old Harbor Freight saw lined up in there. And there's nothing really special going on. We got the, the board up top, uh, the box around it, another base underneath it. And if you notice, there's about an inch wide, uh, there's exactly an inch wide lip all the way around the base of the box. The idea there is you could sit this on a bench and clamp it down, not have it sliding around. To help steady the box, to give it some tension, uh, I've got four tab cuts, I guess you go, I don't know what you call them. Did those on the uh, the old sliding miter saw here. 
Stacked them all up together, did a 245 cuts on either end. And those go uh, on the bottom or the base of the box to give some resistance and rigidity to the frame of the box. Now, one thing I did here that you don't have to do is I countersunk the holes the screws go into. And the reason I did this was that the screws were exactly one inch. Now, I got two one inch or half inch pieces of, of plywood here. What that means is that the screws would just be at the very edge of the bottom side of the footer for, the, for this box. But by countersinking them, it allowed the tip of the screw to stick out just a little bit on the base. What that means is there's a little, there's eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. There's eight little points on the bottom of this to give it some grip. So when I take this thing and I sit it on my bench, you know, and it, it actually bites into the bench and doesn't move around a bit. And I use the same technique on these little, uh, these little tabs or, hell, I don't know what you call them. Anyway, I ran a screw in from the back so that when I clamp the boards in, on each piece there'd be one little tooth of that, of that screw biting into the sidewall so that the whole thing, when you, if you lifted it up, it didn't just fall apart. I could have done it, I, yeah, 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 I could have been a lot more fancy. I could have done some sort of like cleat system and, you know, I could have, you know, routed off some edge and stuff. But I was trying to make this as simple as possible that somebody could throw this together in half an hour or less and have something working but still functional. And I find I've, you know, I've been using this guys for, you know, for a couple weeks now, this thing feels like it's all piece of equipment. It doesn't feel like something that you can just knock right down. Now for lining up the top piece, what I found was the best way was cut out your spot for your saw, get your, uh, your deck piece there lined up and mark around it with a pencil or marker or anything else. I used a router bit to recess that all the way around to allow that that board to uh, set down in there. Now you don't have to do this. You can set it so it just sits on top or clamps in or something else, but that's how I did it. One of the reasons I did that specifically was the piece of material I was using, you know, coming from desk is fairly thick and I didn't want to give up a whole bunch of, of cutting area. Another thing about this box that was really important to me was I wanted to make it so that you didn't have to do anything to the saw. A lot of the ones I've seen, you have to take the saws, the foot off, the cutting foot, and you have to bolt a plate down into it, or in some of them you have to bolt it, you know, you have to drill into the saw and bolt that. I don't want to make any modifications to the saw. I wanted to have it in such a way that if I needed to use that saw, I could get the top off of this thing, pull the saw out, and, and go, and, and use it somewhere else. As you see, this is how quickly you can set up this box. You know, I put a latch system here. You could build this as a straight box. You don't have to do this. But the whole idea of what here was to make it knock down flat. So I took a piano hinge, cut it into three pieces, and on the fourth corner used that latch system. Well, I hope you like this project. I hope we... Uh, brought you something useful today and don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up or and a subscribe I hope to see you guys at maker fair uh, if you guys do decide to make one of these boxes comment below tell us about it maybe do a video let me know what you, you liked what you didn't like uh, be sure to check out uh, the website red-beard.com uh, we're going to be posting more stuff over there, uh, more projects, more plans, and, and whatnot. And I just want to tell you that this week's show is brought to you by the Home Distillers Workbook. Find people over at Home Distillers Workbook. Sponsor this video. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me too. All right, but well, anybody else is going to sponsor a video, I might as well do it, right? Anyway, if you want a good read, check out the Home Distillers Workbook over on Amazon. Your guide to making moonshine, whiskey, vodka, rum, and so much more. I'm Red, and you know how we end this. Shine on. I need a drink after this. <laughs>